So we're going to be talking about the strategic plan, particularly um, the next couple of years, but also um, what we're working towards in the long run. <laughs> so as I think you all know, the the um, mission statement is to is to preserve our connection with nature, to help other people connect with nature. And we do that in a whole bunch of ways uh, at the garden. We do nature education and community interaction, and we have the event space, plant cultivation and propagation. We have water conservation and green energy demonstrations. We practice ecosystem conservation. We have that fire safe landscape display, fire safe garden. We really value children's exploration. We, we showcase our innovative design and construction. We have our life celebration garden. Um, we love that people come here for outdoor recreation. We do botanical research now and we hope to expand that. We have a wonderful horticultural library. We connect pe people to indigenous uh, culture and we support the arts. So all these ways we're working on connecting people with nature. Okay, and in 2020, we had a really amazing list of accomplishments and just some of the highlights in 2020, uh, which was uh, by all accounts, a, a difficult year with COVID. But in 2020, we built up board and staff and volunteer programs. Uh, we added board and operations committees. So increasing our capacity to get things done. Uh, we began working on design of the new panorama trail we maintained the garden operations during COVID-19, so kept the garden open to every extent possible so that people could come and have a safe outdoor space. Uh, we foster collaborations in the community. Uh, Chenna does a great job going out and meeting with community partners, and we have many more community uh, partners and, and people who know about and are interacting with the garden now. The new weaving and restoration garden area is really coming along and that went ahead by some uh, leaps and bounds in 2020. Um, thanks to Ron Kindig, the garden education signage was updated. Oh, if you haven't been there lately, you'll see that we removed the steps between the gardens to work on universal access, having people with limited mobility being able to get between the gardens. Uh, so a step was removed between the display garden and the Fire Safe Garden, which is really important, and we're going to continue to work on universal access um, accessibility. We fenced the garden, which was a very big project and very exciting. And we began getting revenue from admissions fees. So in 2020, you know, the COVID year, we did all these all these things and all these accomplishments, which was amazing. So moving forward into the future what you know let's think a minute about the vision where we're going and we want to in the future use all 150 acres of land that we have to serve the community for education and research and art and fun and and botanical purposes highlighting landscapes from the five Mediterranean climate zones um, and any of you who have been in the garden have seen this uh, the site master plan displays which are from 1997. And so some of you may have wondered, well, what's happening with that? You know, if that was 1997, what are we, what are we doing? The original master plan, um, the vision for the garden was that we would have infrastructure on the east side of the site, on the east side of the river. So, you know, to orient you, uh, the bottom of the map would be along Highway 1, and the left side of the map would be Dairy Creek Road. So the buildings and, and much of the build out was originally intended to be where these red circles are. Um, also originally planned was a $20 million project or build out to make that happen. And that was the 1997 estimate, which is undoubtedly much higher now. Um, the plan was for 200,000 visitors or more per year and trams and cafes and really a, a massive effort. Well, what we have now uh, circled in blue, what evolved was instead more building on the west side of the site. It was scaled to available funding. Um, so little little bits of, of things, um, not, not uh, quite as grandiose as the original plan. And so the accomplishments were different than the original master plan. So given this difference, um, we needed to make some decisions about the master plan. 
And so the board, with, um, with an increase in the board, now we have uh, nine board members. And so the board really needed to decide whether to commit um, and make some of these decisions. Should the master plan be abandoned, modified, or redone? Should the garden's vision remain the same as it was in 1997? What about the needs of the community? The same or different as in 1997? And what are realistic funding prospects for this vision or for this dream? What are realistic resources, the people, the time, the staff, and the volunteers to make this happen? And what should happen with the existing building, buildings in the gardens? And also, we always try to think what would be amazing and fun. So the, the and at the same time, we needed to think about some of the immediate or burning questions for the garden, as well as the future, we're thinking about what needs to happen now. Um, we, in 2020, even though we had all these accomplishments, because of COVID, we had about a $100,000 budget deficit. Um, and so there's a bunch of things that need to happen now and questions that need to be resolved about, well, how do we maintain quality operations? How do we sustain and improve funding? How do we support our staff and volunteers? And how do we prioritize and plan for the near term as well as the long term? So in dealing with these burning questions um, and in terms of thinking through the long-term vision, we developed um, a strategic plan that, that focuses on the, on the long-term a bit and where we wanna go, but specifically lays out a bunch of things that we wanna get done um, to lay the foundation for all these things in the next couple of years. Okay, so this is the 2021-2022 strategic plan, and it was approved by the board of directors in February of this year. So the strategic plan, it helps us make decisions for long-term planning. It helps us set priorities for the short term, and it's a way that we can share our vision both internally like we're doing right now and externally with our, with our supporters and partners out in the public. And so to go about doing that, it was, a, it was quite a process that took many months, um, primarily driven by the planning committee of the board. And I won't drag you through all of the detail of that, except to briefly say that what, how we did it was we laid out um, all of the elements of the vision, the original 97 master plan, which are shown here in blue. And then we looked at the, some, we made some columns in yellow of what do we have instead? What's actually been built? And then in gold, we, we looked at, well, what needs to be done in the next couple of years to kind of move a, a little bit conceptually towards our vision or complete things that we've started to, to be really um, robust and functional, things, but things that are accomplishable in two years. Uh, and then in green, we're, we're calling uh, this phase three. Well, what could we do in five years? What sort of amenities or work towards the plan is actually feasible and potentially fundable in five years? And then over here in red, um, the last phase, phase four, in 10 or more years, what, where are we shooting for? What would be the place that we're moving towards? And is all this feasible? So with this phased approach, uh, the board really felt that that it was feasible to continue to work towards the master plan vision, but in a downscaled, prioritized and phased approach. So that's what, what the decision was and that's what we're working on now, this uh, downscaled, prioritized and phased direction into the future. So the strategic plan for the next two years, we have four goals that are sort of the organizing construct for how we, are going to be making decisions of what happens at the garden in the next four years. Uh, it, it needs to be one of achieving one of these four goals. Um, number one and the most important thing is to achieve financial stability. Uh, we need to get the garden out of the red and into the black and meet our budget, which we think is completely doable. Um, we need to complete four priority construction projects. We need to complete our planning milestones and we're and then we need to build organizational capacity. And I'll be telling you a little bit more about each of these things and what they mean. So first, achieving financial stability and operations, really important. Um, in 2021, this year, we have a budget of $373,000, which means that we estimate, given our lines of business, given our 10 lines of business, that that is our goal of how much we're gonna bring in $373,000 and we're spending it like we got it, right? We're, we're spending our money as, as 
you know, anticipating we're going to have this $373,000, at least, if not more, from our lines of business, um, which are these 10 items. And on the right, you'll see that that's what's in the budget of how much money we, we need to make from each of those things or more. Um, donations, $112,000. Fundraisers, $62,000 and change. Admissions, $46,000. Space rentals, $40,000. Events, $28,000. Memberships, $30,000. Programs, $22,000. Spring and fall plant sales, $12,000. Grants, just for garden operations, for the garden themselves, um, $10,000. And gift shop, at least $6,300. So some can be, some fall short, then we need more in other categories to meet our budget. Okay, that was goal number one. Goal number two, oh, the screen looks funny. Goal number two is to complete four priority construction projects. Okay, so these are the four priority projects. Now these are capital projects, which means they're not in the budget of $373,000. We need to go get money separately for these four things. And those four priority projects mean that we're hoping not to get distracted by a lot of other things or new things. Keep our eye on the ball for these four things for the next two years. The first is fencing. Second is the panorama trail, which includes the footbridges and the structure um, retaining walls to make the panorama trail um, go out into the new part of the garden, kiosks, um, in the new five kiosks for each of the new Mediterranean areas and the co courtyard completion of the Oakland Pavilion, which means the flat work, drainage, the fountain, donor wall. Okay. So these are pictures of what these things look like. If you've been to the garden recently, you have seen a, a, some of the new fencing. This is in the children's garden where we have these beautiful pickets and that is substantially completed. Um, on the left, you'll see the the new um, uh, kind of design of the new panorama trail uh, in yellow that goes in a beautiful way out into the 150 acres. Really, really spectacular to hike. The views are, are stupendous. You can see the ocean from some, from some places in it, and it really gives you a much better sense of the whole, uh, you know, the whole beautiful landscape that we have here. Um, you'll see a mock-up of the viewing kiosks, the five kiosks that we would like to have uh, with interpretive signage, and then the uh, courtyard that needs to be completed so that we can have more, you know, events and uh, venues and really make use of that in a better way as a as an art and educational space. All right, goal number three is to complete the planning milestones. So I mentioned that we're working on some five-year goals and some 10-year goals to, to, to achieve our, our vision in, um, in concept, this, this prioritized um, scaled back vision. So to do those things, we need to plan for some of them now. And we have a planning committee under the board that is working on things like the MO, memorandum of understanding with county parks, um, an Eagle Rock Trail land swap where we um, exchange some land that we need closer to Dairy Creek Road. We need permits from the county for these four priority construction projects. We need environmental planning documents. We need a circulation plan for how the trails meet the roads and where the maintenance vehicles go, et cetera. We need plans for the visitor center, really how big is it gonna be and why is it, what's in there and how is the public gonna use it? That hasn't happened yet. And roads, roads and bridges and utility and parking plans. Um, and then water, we need to work on our water acquisition and storage so solution. So a bunch of things planning wise that we're working on now. And lastly, building organizational capacity. So we need to think about how best to support the board. We need board, some new board members with some specific skills, um, such as financial skills and human resources skills and uh, fundraising. We need uh, staff. The, the staff is really maxed out. So within the approved budget, within the money that we have, adding staff where we can is really important. Recruiting volunteers in needed areas is very important. And building garden committees. Committees are sort of the backbone of getting a lot of things done. And so making sure that each committee has at least four people on them and the committees are active so that we can sustain our operations. So if you haven't seen this before, this is the corporate structure for the garden, kind of how it lays out in blue on the left are, is the board, the board members, 
and the committees of the board, um, the finance committee, the development or fundraising committee um, with some grants responsibilities under that, a marketing committee, a planning committee, uh, a governance committee, which is things like bylaws and uh, strategic planning, and then education and re research committee, committees of the board. And then the middle is a very important um, staff component. And it, it, is, it is a very um, lean and mean staff for the amount of things that the garden does. It's amazing what they get done. And um, then on the right side in the green and yellow is the, is the volunteer portion of the operations of the garden. Um, Ann Stevens, you know, is the volunteer coordinator. There's an operations committee and under the operations committee are all these pieces that help get things done at the garden, like an interpretation committee, children's education committee, membership committee, accessioning committee, library committee, garden maintenance, science, propagation in the greenhouses, gift shop, events and fundraising, facilities and maintenance, adult programs and trails. So, so many different pieces of this, um, of this uh, to make this operation function um, that are slots for passionate volunteers. Okay, so, so that's really it. The strategic plan is really to get us rowing together in one direction so that everyone understands what the priorities are for the next couple of years, where we're going in the future and, uh, and plan for getting there. And there's a lot of detail in um, the strategic plan that I'm not taking you through. The, the specific runs, responsibilities under each committee. We have goals 4C, 5B, 57D, you know, that different committees are responsible for. And we'll check back in on um, accountability for those things probably a couple times a year. Uh, so, so then, you know, I am so excited to be presenting to you and just having you all think about what you can help do to help the the slow BG thrive into the future. I know that all of you, uh, or at least most of you are already volunteering and, and that is super valuable. Um, and you might think about other things if, if they, if they are, work for you, right? Becoming a member is really good and important to the garden to have sort of this membership base that helps sustain us. Uh, participating in garden fundraisers and events is, is really valuable to us. Um, buying gifts for friends and family at the gift shop. If you haven't been in there lately, it's amazing. There's so many more beautiful things in the gift shop um, and a plant sale right outside the gift shop that has been very popular. Um, making a donation is always valuable. Uh, a, a kind of new thing that we just discovered is when you shop Amazon, if you, rather than saying amazon.com, you go in amazonsmile.com you can designate the garden as a beneficiary and anything you purchase, uh, the garden will receive 0.5%, half of 1% of your purchases. So that's super easy. Uh, considering the garden in your estate planning uh, is very much appreciated. And then of course, inviting friends and family to visit the garden and support us. So now, uh, actually, I would say it's your turn and do you have any any questions or comments or suggestions for us based on everything that that um, we've talked about? <laughs> 